I've been awake since 1am, and it's now almost 3am while I'm drinking wine. I might be developing alcoholism, yet remember three encounters in my life where I've seen shadow people and have decided to share. The first encounter I saw the shadow person was when I was about 11 years old. I was on a camping trip with my cousins. In the early morning, everybody was still asleep, except for me, and I was staring at the side of the tent when I could see a clear outline of a boy wearing a cap on the side of the tent, except instead of being like a normal shadow, it was a solid black in comparison of the shadows of the trees and other things casting over the tent. The boy then repeatedly walked back and forth past the tent. We were in the middle of nowhere, and I was scared, considering I thought a complete stranger was pacing by our tent. When everyone else woke up, we went outside our tent, and there was nobody around. I told my cousins what had happened, and they didn't believe me. Yet, it was like the boy followed me home, because he would appear behind people when I was talking to them outside, in the doorway, or walk along the fence line at random. His appearance wasn't ultimately creepy, besides him appearing at random outside over the course of the year. The last time I saw the boy was when my friend and I had a sleepover, and my mother was working, so we were going outside, not sleeping, and messing around. We were in the front yard, late at night, when we felt like somebody was watching us, so we got a torch and shined it around the yard, and then down the street. No one was there yet when we shined the torch over a power pole. We both briefly saw a boy in a cap poking his head out from behind the pole. Yet even when the light hit him, he was still completely black. We shined the torch around the pole for a bit, yet didn't see anyone, so we went inside and locked the door. Nothing else occurred until I was about 14 and encountered the girl, who was ultimately more aggressive and creepier. The first time I met the girl, I was half asleep at a family's friend's house. The family friend had doors in most rooms, except for the makeshift guest room that they had curtains in the doorway for privacy instead of an actual door. Again, it was early morning, and the family friend's kids were running around making noise. I rolled onto my side to see the shadow of a very tall girl in a dress, holding the curtain open, staring at me. I was annoyed and thought it was a resident of the family, and so I said, what do you want? Then she immediately vanished, and the curtain even dramatically flickered as if there was a sudden breeze. I went back to sleep. A few days later, again, when I was sleeping, I could feel the blanket slowly dragging down my body. I assumed the blanket was falling off the bed, so I just felt around with my eyes, closed and pulled the blanket up. Then, the blanket aggressively whipped down to my ankles. I, still being half asleep, assumed the kids of the house were being little shits and messing with me, so I pulled the blanket back up, wrapped it like a cocoon around me, and gripped onto the blanket at the top. I could feel the blanket really roughly and relentlessly getting tugged. By this time, I was annoyed and just wanted to sleep, so I said, Just take the fucking blanket then! letting go of the blanket that basically flew into the air and landed in the entry point of the room. I sat up and realized, number one, there was no one else in the room since I would have heard them and there are no signs of running or laughing from the kids. Two, the intensity of the blanket was pulled off me and it couldn't have been done by a child and was major overkill of blanket snatching. Despite not seeing anything, I was creeped out and ran down the hall into the living room where I stayed up the rest of the night. Another encounter with the girl and the more creepy ones was when I was sleeping on the couch of my older sister's house. I woke up because I felt a big whoosh of air as if somebody ran at mega speed past the couch. I lay there wondering, what the fuck? Then I saw the clear shadow of a tall girl in a dress run really fast past the couch. By then, I was scared, so I didn't move and this girl was basically running laps past the couch at super speed, 
with a whoosh every time she passed. Mind you, this was a living room, so to even pick up a speed this girl was getting and in such a short length of area was supernatural to begin with. I was getting more and more spooked, so I decided to make a fat leap of faith and to try to dart into my sister's and her significant other's room, which meant I had to pass the area where the shadow person version of the flash was sprinting. When I moved, the girl stopped, then walked around to the edge of the couch and stared at me. I was feeling bold enough to tell her to go away, so she came closer to me. I felt around for a cushion and threw it at her, which went straight through her and didn't do shit. She then basically walked up beside me and started leaning her face towards mine, so I covered mine with a blanket, started crying, and then started saying the Lord's Prayer. I didn't move and eventually fell asleep until the morning. My sister told me in the morning if I kept running around at night, I can get out of her house. The girl would then appear in the corner of my room at night at random. I slept with a nightlight until I was almost 20. The worst and last encounter with her was in my family home. I had a bunk bed that was a double below and single at the top. I slept on the bottom bunk. One night, I woke up to pitch black feet climbing up the ladder of the bunk bed and then the weight from the top of the bunk as if someone had plopped down on it. I stared at the top bunk not knowing what to do when the entire bed frame started shaking and rocking as if somebody up there was having a seizure. I wasn't going to check it out and then I started hearing a really harsh and rough breathing with something that almost sounded like growling so I just started praying because I was too scared to leave the bed. I then slept on the floor of my mother's room for several days. The final time I saw what I assumed to be a shadow person was when I was about 21, and I booked a hotel room with a female cousin. We were going to an event in a city area. My cousin got trashed, and I wasn't that interested in drinking. We got back to the hotel, and my cousin went straight to sleep. My cousin was laying there sleep talking and I was playing on my phone. The beds were separated like typical hotel beds with a bedside cupboard in between. I looked up and a tall shadow of a man was standing over my cousin. He simply appeared from nowhere and I was trying to get to my cousin to wake up. The man immediately whipped his head at me because it was a shadow. It had no facial features yet, but it was still staring at me. He then basically zoomed towards my bed, to which I jumped off and switched over the headlights on and he vanished. My cousin was too drunk to even notice, and I just kept the lights on all night. This happened to me and my cousin, who I'll call Blake for this story, back in the fall of 2009. Our grandma decided to let us stay the night over at her house, as she often did, because me and my cousin were really close and she was the only relative that let us stay the night at her house. Now her house was always creepy to us and we always said that our papa, who passed away about six years before this, was still in the house watching over us. Looking back, it really didn't make sense, but it did help us sleep at night. Anyway. That night, after rounds of junk food and Call of Duty, we decided it was time for bed. Now one thing we always did in my grandmother's house was sleep with the TV on. That will be relevant in a minute. As we lay in our beds, we heard a loud thud come from downstairs. My eyes shot open and looked towards the door. Now the TV wasn't super quiet, but it wasn't super loud either. Not to mention we were on the second floor of the house, so the fact that I heard that big of a thud was a little worrying to me. I turned over and shook Blake to see if he was still awake. Turns out he had been awake for longer than me because he couldn't sleep, so he heard the thud too. What was that? I asked him. I have no idea. You think we should check it out? He asked me. Yeah, we need to make sure Mama is okay. That was the one mistake that possibly led to what happened afterwards. 
We both got up and slowly approached the door. I turned the knob and opened the door. We stepped outside onto the landing. I started to turn and walk down the stairs when Blake stopped me. I turned and he seemed like he was listening for something. Then, another loud thud came from the downstairs. So being the idiots we were, we didn't think about it being an intruder. So we thought it was a ghost. I was really into ghost hunters and shows like that at the time. So I pulled out my sister's old Razor flip phone and started to record us asking questions. Is there somebody here with us? I asked. No response. Papa, is that you? Blake asked. Just then, a huge crash could be heard like something made of glass had hit the floor. We scrambled into the bedroom. Once we were both inside, I slammed the door shut and I breathed a sigh of relief until I heard what sounded like somebody was going through the drawer on the nightstand. I turned and looked at Blake. He was paralyzed, staring towards his side of the bed. The nightstand drawer was open. Again, following what I had seen done before, I pulled up the thermal filter on the camera on my phone. What I saw turned my blood to ice. A shadowy, humanoid figure was bent over and was digging through the drawer. My cousin had snapped out of his trance and looked at the phone. He gasped. Then the thing jerked its head to look at us. I knew it was caught. It then stood up straight and then turned to face us. I was shitting myself at this point. I just knew this thing was going to kill us both and no one would know what happened. But then, something weird had happened. It disappeared, almost like it was blinked out of existence. I wasted no time. I tore open the door and practically flew down the stairs. I ran into the spare bedroom downstairs and turned to see if Blake had followed me. Thankfully, he wasn't too far behind. Once we were both inside, I slammed the door and locked it. What was that thing? Blake asked me. I don't know, but I'm not going to sleep. I don't want that thing to sneak up on us. And we didn't. We stayed up watching these old sitcoms that networks would play in the early morning until we saw sunlight peeking through the blinds in the room. We both then passed out. When we woke up, our grandmother had just asked us what we were doing last night because all she heard was banging all night long. Both of our faces drained of color, but we didn't want to tell her what we saw, so we just said we couldn't sleep and stayed up most of the night. I wish that was the end, but one more terrifying event would unfold. We got my phone to go back and check the recording we had. You could hear me ask my question and we heard no response. But when Blake asked his question, he got an answer. About five seconds later, he asked if our papa was there with us. We heard a harsh whisper say yes. A few weeks later, my sister and our cousin Lee were sleeping upstairs in the dead of night, when all of a sudden, she was awoken by what sounded like a deck of cards being shuffled. But somehow, she managed to fall back asleep. Not even an hour later, Lee was awoken by a blood-curdling scream coming from the far corner of the room. She then woke my sister up, and they ran downstairs to sleep on the couch. She said it was like that it came from a woman, then reluctantly told her what me and Blake encountered a couple years before. She looked at me in shock. That was the last creepy thing to have ever happened to us in that house, because as life went on, we started going to her house less and less. It got to the point to where all of us had forgotten all of these things that had happened. I brought it up a few years later, and it still sent shivers down my cousin's spine. A new family bought the house after my grandmother had passed away a couple of years ago, so I only pray that whatever was in that house is gone now. I found out a few years later that what we saw was a shadow person. I don't know why it was at that house or what it was looking for, but it sends shivers down my spine to know whatever it was up there could have been watching us while we slept. I come from a small railroad town in Wisconsin, USA. You know, 
the state with a large roster of known serial killers, and grew up in peak emo scene angsty times, so as a form of entertainment and a subtle nod to what we considered rebellion at our young, naive age, we would walk around town amongst all of the county roads, train tracks, and abandoned buildings scattered throughout our little towns. Most evenings, the scariest thing that would happen is a deer would hop out and spook or one of our more creative friends would try and convince us of some alien sighting or urban legend that they swore was true, so we didn't take many claims among the group seriously. This evening, however, was different. As we made our way through the shadows, our somewhat large group splintered off into little subgroups of twos and threes. We were a fairly large group of friends, varying in age, so the younger ones would often pull together towards the middle of our caravan, while the older characters in our bunch held ranks on the outer edges. As we made our way back to one of the boys from our group's home, one of the more dramatic members of our swoop bang pack claimed there was someone driving behind us at a distance slowly with the headlights off. We all scoffed and started making jabs at him, along with some childish ghost noises, mocking that the ghost car was going to get us. A few more blocks down, this boy that had claimed to have spotted a stalker grew more and more uneasy and stuttered out, You guys, seriously, they are getting closer. I could hear the tires on the gravel. Noticing how anxious he now seemed and how far we still had to go to get to the older members of the group, began to take his claims more seriously, but, but did so in a way that would freak out the younger members. As we made our turn onto the paved road, that meant we were two turns away from our safe haven. I said, hey, first one to arrive at the house gets to pick a movie we all watch. Since the younger children were usually subjected to watching whatever boring or spooky things the older ones of us put on, this made them take off at a full sprint. As soon as our feet hit the pavement and we started our fast pace race back to the promised land of locked doors and my friend's parents waiting for us, Headlights flicker on and sync with the roar of an older modeled engine. At this point, the younger children are running and yelling in unison and questioning what was happening and who was that. I surpassed the younger children and saw the sign that held the name of their housing complex that was nuzzled in a few trees. As I saw this, I yelled, Everyone under the sign! We all skidded to a stop and rolled underneath as the man slammed his brakes to a screeching stop. He threw his vehicle into reverse and began to circle the sign. I noticed his over-headlight was on that cast an unsettling shadow over his face that appeared to consist of glasses that were far thicker than the seemingly thin hair that the light shone through like a thin veil. Finally, as he rounded the part of the sign that was the sharpest turn to move, I whispered loudly, All right, everybody. To the neighbor's yards, let's go. We all moved at record speeds in comparison to our sluggish paces that we usually assumed on these late night endeavors. As we ran through the blackness that was slowly only getting darker due to the thick cover of trees that now surrounded us, we suddenly and unfortunately realized that our neighbor had an otherwise beautifully landscaped yard that had small bridges and ponds throughout it. As many of us ran while jumping over small ditches, decorative hills, and lawn ornaments, we finally saw the road that separated the neighbors from our final destination. As we all approached the road, I saw a gleam of headlights approaching to our left, nearing the road that we needed to cross to finally achieve our sanctuary for the evening. As I saw these headlights approaching, I yelled, Run! He is coming! We gotta go! As all but one of us made it past me to the safety of the yard, I heard a faint owl behind me. As I looked back, I saw the youngest and by far smallest member of our ranks holding their knee while rocking next to a large rock. I looked at the small child and back of the vehicle that was now speeding to turn down the road and towards us. I ran back to the child and scooped them up while yelling, Leave the door open! Leave the door open! The rest was a weird combination of slow motion mixed with the quickest experience of my life. The vehicle sped and narrowly missed us. 
When I arrived at the door, I dove while holding the crying child as though I was some athlete, cradling the ball for the final score of the game. One of the other older children slammed the door behind us, and we all sat and silently sobbed while we told his parents what had just ensued. We begged his parents not to tell the cops since we were all up past our small town's curfew. Now that I'm older, I wish that we would have at least told the non-emergency line, so it was on record, but it is what it is. To this day, I'm very wary of walking home alone at night, and now that I have a son of my own, and he is nearing the age where he will start to want to adventure on his own, I will tell him this story, so that he knows some scary stories are real. I am no stranger to sleep paralysis. I have suffered it from childhood. I will be the first to admit that I did not understand it. I honestly believed during that time I was somewhere between life and death. Trying to explain it to my parents, who equally did not understand it, I was afraid to talk about it after the initial talk with my parents, so I did not want to appear crazy. It was not until I went to school to be an RN that I fully understood it. Yet I will also admit, I never saw anything. Not demons, not shadow people, not even lucid dreaming. It just became a part of my life, I accepted, until now. I have many family scattered throughout the states, as well as Ireland. I travel between the two, actually. Last night, however, something changed. I flew from County Kerry, spent a couple of nights in NYC before traveling to a small town in Missouri to visit a beloved uncle. He is single and owns a huge house that sits on a lake. Table Rock. When I say huge, I mean huge. Several bedrooms that each hold a bath as well as a separate. It should be turned into a bed and breakfast. He gave me a choice of rooms and I chose one overlooking the lake as opposed to one overlooking the gardens, as it is currently wintertime. My uncle also owns this little 4.5 kilogram dog that yaps at its own shadow. For reference, I am not a pet person. I own a dog that I love, yet I tolerate other people's pets. So naturally, for the most part, ignored this tiny dog. I tucked into bed, wondering if I could acclimate to the time change. I promise I closed the door to my room. I woke up to this tiny dog on my chest, yapping. Come on, a tiny dog yaps, not barks, and looking at the door. I realized I was in sleep paralysis. My first thought was not what the dog may have been yapping at, just that he was. My second thought was, I closed my door, how the feck did he get in? I was able to turn my head towards the door. Anyone who has suffered sleep paralysis knows what a feat that is. Yet I still could not turn my body. Then I saw it. Him, whatever. The shadow person. He took up the entire doorframe. Was my first or second reaction fear? No. I was still wondering why the door was open. I thought to myself, Alright, I am obviously in sleep paralysis. Usually when this happens, I just tell myself, there's nothing else to do but go back to sleep, or I can try to figure this out. So I looked at him. He was nothing but shadow, yet I had the feeling I was looking in his eyes as he was looking in mine. All the time, this dog is yapping. I got the feeling he wanted to cause terror and fear in me. Yet as we looked at each other, I was curious about him. I felt his malice change to one of curiosity himself. He did not understand why I was not afraid. He was just as curious about me as I was to him. All at once, the hall light went on. He disappeared. I heard my uncle say to his dog, Stop barking at so-and-so! The dog left me at this point and went with my uncle. I was released from the paralysis and walked over to my door and locked it. You may wonder how I could do this so nonchalantly and wrap myself in my blankets and fall right back asleep. I can only say it was my rational and analytical mind. Surely such things do not happen, right? The next morning my uncle made salmon and baked berries. 
See why I said this house should be a bed and breakfast? I was not going to talk about the night's events before, until my uncle said, You saw the shadow man, did you not? For the first time, and of course, I was at a loss for words. I'm about 17 at the time I'm writing this, and this story happened about six years ago, but I've still never forgotten it. Up until the night that this happened, I had never believed in ghosts, but now I don't know what to believe in. I was about 11, and I was living in this house that we had just moved into. It wasn't very big, but it was spacious. It was one of those houses where there was another family occupying the other half of the building, and the people living next door told me that the previous tenants were Satanists and constantly tried to summon spirits and demons. At the time, I thought this was just them trying to scare an innocent child, but I would soon find out that this wasn't the case. I never had sleep paralysis or anything of the sort, and this was the only time that this had happened in the year that me and my mother lived in that house. I woke up one night, and I realized that I couldn't get up. I was able to move, but it was much more of a struggle, like some unforeseen force was holding me down, preventing from being able to get up. I struggled for a few more minutes, until eventually giving up, and that's when I saw it in the corner of my eye. There was what appeared to be a man, made of shadow in the darkness. I was so scared that I peed the bed, but I was unable to say anything. I just stared, unable to move or speak. Eventually, I heard whispers. They were mostly incoherent, but I did manage to hear one part. The figure looked at me and said, Don't worry, I'm not here for you. When it spoke, it sounded like it was trying to speak over multiple people whispering. But after it said that, it left. A few minutes later, I was able to move again, and I ran straight to my mom and woke her up. I told her that there was a man in my room. When I told her, she freaked out and grabbed a knife. I explained to her that it was a shadow man, but she didn't believe me. We then cleaned my sheets, and I went back to bed the next morning. When I woke up, I found out that the neighbors who live in the other half of the house, their grandfather had died in his sleep. I'm sure that is what the spirit meant by, I'm not here for you. I'm not entirely sure, but I think I saw the Grim Reaper that night. I've had nightmares about the night for years, and I was afraid to tell anyone. But my mom and best friend, out of fear that I might be the next person, I'm sure the Grim Reaper doesn't want people telling others his business. To start off this story, it took place four years ago. I'm now 17, 5'8 male, and recently found your channel due to some other weird occurrence that happened to me recently, but that is for another time. This took place in December, when I was 13. We just had dinner at a local restaurant, and we decided to stay at my grandma's house, so we hopped in the car and drove over to her house. We got there at about 8 and noticed something off about the house. We visit my grandma every weekend, ever since I was young, so I can sense when there is something off. I was just about to set my belongings on her brand new couch she just bought, when I noticed little footprints all over the bottom of my seat. I thought that it was a bit strange, so I went over to my mother, who doesn't believe in ghosts, but in spirits. At first, she didn't believe me, and said I was just being a kid. But when I told her to go look at the couch, she was as equally as shocked as I was. My mom asked my grandmother if my little baby cousin had been over that day. My grandmama replied that he hadn't been over there in five days. And also, she said that she hadn't checked the couch before she left, and there wasn't a single footprint. My mom brushed it off and decided it was nothing. My mom is a realist as well. Later that night, my mom tells me it's time for bed, so I crawl into bed. We went there so much I had my own bedroom. 
as soon as I hit my pillow, I got a sense of uneasiness, like something was watching me. I told myself that I was just being paranoid, so I attempted to fall asleep. But I still had the sense that I was being watched. I usually never get this vibe from anyone or anything. Anyway, I decided that it was not smart nor safe to stay in that room anymore. So I decided to quickly pack my things and hurried down the hallway to our living room where my mom was. She was annoyed I woke her up because I was feeling something weird in my room. But I told her I did and I didn't feel comfortable staying in that room. And so I set my things down near the TV and attempted to fall asleep. I had slept for almost an hour when I was awoken by a presence or somebody behind me, which is impossible because I was right behind a sewing machine and that older than my grandma and it was too big for a person to stand behind. But I knew if I turned around, I would regret it. So I just waited and waited for what felt like hours when in reality, it was only like 30 minutes until I worked up the courage to turn around to see what I saw. To my horror, I found a baby's handprint right on the pillow next to my head. I froze not knowing what I just discovered, but knew it wasn't there when I placed my head on the pillow. I was able to gather myself and turned right back around to attempt to sleep through the night. That didn't work. I instead was so paranoid that I lied awake all night, worried about what's going to happen next. At 3 a.m., the devil's hour, I was just about to doze off until I heard a sound. It sounded like bells or somebody knocking on metal. I just decided to stay put and not investigate. I'm glad I did. The bells noise went away after 3 a.m. and I relaxed and decided to think my own thoughts. At 5 a.m., my mom got up and went into the kitchen to go get coffee. I got up as well. She asked me how I slept. I told her terrible. She laughed, thinking I was paranoid until I showed her my pillow. She had a look of confusion, but also tried to rationalize the whole situation and told me that it was just a dirt smudge. I got pretty frustrated for her not believing me, but I sighed and knew I know what I saw. Now, ever since this incident occurred, I've had weird and scary incidents happen to me up till recently. Two weeks after we stayed, my grandfather was taking a walk and he fell on his hip and broke it. He was rushed to the hospital and survived the surgery for his new hip replacement. But sadly, he began losing his independence and now presently has broken his hip twice, gotten real sick and almost died a few times. Meanwhile, my family had their own issues, but that's another story for later. I will never forget this incident and I hope whatever demon or thing was there that night could you kindly fuck off? I live in a rural area in the Midwest, one of those areas that have nothing but acres of land around you. I came to learn a few years ago, the land where my house was, was built over 80 years ago, was once a farmland with slaves who were chained up in the wooden cabins when they weren't needed. Honestly, hearing that story broke my heart and I hoped and prayed that those slaves found peace in the afterlife. When we first moved into this house, there was an old barn that was still standing a bit far from the house, but I never went into it, and turns out the owner already sold the barn before he sold us the house, and it was due to being taken down. It wasn't long before a crew came in and started taking it down, but before they could finish it, ended up collapsing and coming down on its own. We're the last house in the street and a bit further down the road from my house is a very tiny, old, and what I assume to be a family-owned cemetery. And when I say old, I mean so old that you can't even read the names on the tombstones, which are very thin and clearly were handmade. And because of that, little cemetery, I always had a feeling these houses would be haunted. And I can't speak for my neighbors, but I definitely know mine is. But that's another story. My room is on the bottom floor and faces the backyard, and also the stairs that lead up onto a landing that leads up to the deck, and one autumn night, I'm sitting in my room with the window open, enjoying the cooler weather, when I heard someone walking up and down the stairs. I think it's my uncle, so I didn't bother to look, but after I kept hearing those footsteps, 
wondering why he could have been walking up and down them so much. And I became confused when I looked over and saw absolutely no one. I got up, walked to the window to see if maybe it was my uncle, and he just stepped out of view. But no, there was no one. A few seconds later, I began to hear those footsteps again, and I immediately panic and slam my window shut. Lock it, put down the blinds, pull the curtains, jumped back into my bed, trying to process what just happened. After I calm down and get back to working on my computer, that's when I start to hear tapping on my window. And not just regular tapping, it was always three taps being an avid Ghost Adventures fan I learned. I also learned that if something taps or knocks three times, then it's demonic. So I do my best to calm my beating heart and just act like I didn't hear it, which was a mistake on my part, because the taps went from light to heavy and just happened a few seconds apart, always being in threes. My grandmother, who was in her bedroom down the hall from me, ended up hearing the tapping and came to my room to see if I heard it also, and I told her, yes, it's right outside my window. My grandmother, being the fearless woman she is, went to the back door, flipped the light on, and opened the door looking right down to where my bedroom window is, then looked at me and said, baby, there's nothing there. I ended up texting my cousin, who was upstairs at the time, asking if he heard it, and he said, yeah, but thought it was your grandma doing something downstairs, making that noise. And I told him, no, I was on the computer, and grandma was asleep. We weren't doing anything. A few minutes later, he texted me back, saying he went outside and looked and saw nothing. The tapping stopped, that I guess whatever it was didn't like that it caught the attention of my family. I still live in that house, and nothing like that has happened again. And honestly, I don't ever want it to. I hate to think that it was something demonic, and it was targeting me. I've always been sensitive to the other side. I won't dive into all of the occurrences I've had. Anyone interested can message me for stories. Anywhere from shadow figures, doppelgangers, Michigan wolfman, poltergeists, possible demons, and more. It's been a very interesting life. None of these stories include the random dangerous encounters with strangers either. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody listening to this or reading this is already rolling their eyes, much like I do from time to time. I digress. I am a 29-year-old female, and as recently as September of 2019, I purchased a house. It's an older home, built in the 1800s. It's sturdy and has plenty of rooms, two bedrooms upstairs and down. My room the largest of all of them, has a walk-in closet the size of a small child's bedroom, a crawl space attic above that, and finally, at the back of the closet is a door to an unfinished, unused type of walk-in attic space. I wanted to turn it into a small reading nook in the future, but now my unease towards that area is becoming unresolvable. I almost never use my closet. I've noticed small things here and there, that hinted the paranormal. Despite my sensitivity to the realm, I try to explain happenings rationally before outright jumping to demon in my house. Such things include shadows without a source, voices from my closet, items missing or moved, cold spots, bangs on walls, doors being closed that I'd left open, etc. Typical shit. A lot of these things can be explained by me just being forgetful or the fact that the house is almost 200 years old. However, no touching until this morning. I'm a bartender. My night ends around 4 a.m. by the time I'm finished at work, get home, get ready, and into bed. I was lying in bed, sleep mask on, stories queued up and ready to sleep. I turned out my light and settled in. I was still wide awake and just getting comfortable. I'm a left side sleeper and I'm stretched into my favorite position. Legs stacked, right foot behind the left with the inside of my foot touching the mattress. Imagine a very loose fetal position. So, I'm comfortable, and suddenly, I feel the sensation of a finger press gently into the inside of my right foot, the one against the mattress, and travel from my arch to my heel and sink away. 
I tried not to panic. I kept my breathing steady. I thought throughout every rational explanation I could come up with and roll over. Similar position, opposite side. It didn't happen again, and I willed myself to sleep. As I mentioned before, I have seen and heard hints towards the paranormal, but only recently have these things escalated. This touch wasn't the first occurrence of it letting me know. It is, however, the first that I can't justify with a rational answer. The first time was before the light in the hall had been installed, so there was no light to go by. I had just left my bathroom and stepped onto the landing of the stairs when I heard the shower door rattle and slide partially. My cat was steadily beside me, bouncing and chirping because I was headed downstairs, and at the noise, she stopped and turned to the bathroom. As I put my foot out to take a step down, I heard the landing behind me creak and groan as the weight was being put on it, heavier than mine and painfully slow. I felt an agonizing sense of dread that someone was towering over me in my small hallway. However, I chose to ignore it and just went down the stairs, with my girl eagerly racing me. I rationalized that it's an older home and creaks but I still called my boyfriend and explained what happened on my way to work. He has seen and felt things here too, and I think that's why he doesn't stay the night much anymore. I know it's because I started doing renovations to the house. I'm trying to return it to the glorious old house it once was, with very minimal modern flair. The electricians used that crawl space in my closet to install the fixture above my stairwell, and I believe it woke something up something much more interested in me than I am in it. I live east of the great city of Atlanta, and the area around me has a very rich history, especially with the Civil War. One day, me and my friends decided to go to a place called Altoona Pass. It's a long trail that has been converted for walking and used to be the site of the train tracks that ran through the town of Ackworth during the Civil War. In October of 1864, it was the site of a battle called the Battle of Alatoona Pass when the Confederates attacked the Union held fort on top of the hill next to the tracks. The battle raged on for only a day and a half and over 1,600 men perished before the Confederacy finally surrendered. Because so many perished, there have been legends for many, many years of it being haunted. This intrigued me and my then friends and we went out to Altoona Pass a little after midnight. We were wandering around and walking down the trail, talking to each other and exploring. After walking around for about 10 minutes, we reached the end of the open tunnel that runs to the mountain and decided to turn back. The names have been changed, but other than myself, there were three other people, we will call them Sandy, Corey, and Michael. While slowly making our way to the entrance of the tunnel, we started hearing movement above the 65-foot drop cliff, which makes up the sides of the tunnel, twigs snapping, rocks falling, and leaves being crushed. At this point, me and Sandy are clutching together, and Corey and Michael are following closely behind. Although he has never claimed to have a sixth sense, Corey, Sandy, and I also knew that Michael was able to see and hear things that none of us could. After deciphering the answers to a few questions that were asked, we were able to figure out that there were three Union soldiers near us. One was a man about 35 years old. One was a boy, about 17, and the third was a man who was about 23 years old. We were asking questions like, Do you miss your family? To which they would scream yes. Do you want a cigarette? To which one answered, I just quit. And then finally, Michael said the older man said you don't have to be afraid of us, that they, we are protecting you from something in the distance. Once that was said, Sandy screamed and ran out of the tunnel, all of us following, kicking rocks, and running as fast as we could. Finally, we got to my truck, which was parked in the parking lot, and tried to calm our nerves. I threw down the tailgate, shaking, and sat down with Sandy and lit a cigarette to calm me down. As we were talking and laughing about how big of scaredy cats we are, Michael spoke up and said I'm going back in. After a minute of us refusing and pleading for him to stay with us, he picked up a bag and, and a big stick 
and walked back into the tunnel alone. And we watched, worried as he disappeared into the darkness. A few minutes later, he comes back, stick in hand, and there is something different about him. He seemed overly happy and giddy, and then he spoke. I know what was watching us, he said, smiling. I shivered because his smile creeped me out more than the tunnel, and we asked, okay, what was it? After a short pause, he said Zozo. After that, we flew into the car and burned rubber to get out of there. I had heard many stories and researched about Ouija boards before this, so I knew of Zozo and what he was capable of. I have been back to Altoona Pass since that night, both during the day and at night, but if I'm ever there at night, I will not enter the tunnel because I know what is lurking in the dark. I have heard many instances and even witnessed people using a Ouija board inside the tunnel, and I personally believe that the people using a Ouija board opened a portal for Zozo to come through and was never closed. Perhaps he can move freely between open portals, but who knows? All I know is that what I felt and heard that night was enough for me. I know most of us believe in ghosts. The question is, have you seen one? For years I've watched ghost shows like Ghost Adventures, but I never thought I'd see one. I've always just explained away bumps in the night. But here's two stories that, to me, still send shivers up my spine. Back in 2013, I had just turned 19, lived in a super small town in Alberta, Canada. That year, the river surrounding the town flooded. Homes were lost as well as lives in surrounding communities. I believe this is what made the energy in these homes stronger. At the time, I was living with my boyfriend's family in a very old home, estimated about 112 years old at the time. It was just a small, typical farmhouse moved into town from an unknown farm in Alberta. It was a two-bedroom, one bath, with a new add-on basement with two other bedrooms. Picture an old farmhouse, the very original hardwood floors, white crown moldings, very tight hallways and small rooms. Me and my boyfriend's room was in the add-on basement. It was always freezing and very, very dark. Now, before I moved in his house, his mom used to witness a dark figure standing outside the house, just staring in through the windows at night. Whatever this thing was, would bang on the doors and exterior walls. Now when anyone new would move in, that figure would then come in the house too. New neighbors moved in next door, and things started getting strange. Every day when everybody would get home from work, things would be moved around and rummaged through, but nothing would be taken so we assumed the neighbors were coming in the house. One day, me and my boyfriend got home before anybody else, and like normal things were moved around, so we cleansed everything else and went downstairs to relax before bed. His family had three dogs at the time, and you could hear them walking around upstairs. We finally get ready for bed and lie down. All of a sudden, we hear somebody run around upstairs. Not the dogs walking around, but a person stomping, but none of the dogs were barking or getting upset. No one else was going to be home till 11 p.m. or later. We call his mom, asking if she had gotten home, and the answer was no. So my boyfriend jumps out of bed and grabs a shotgun, thinking somebody had broken into the house. He sweeps the house room to room, and nothing. No one but the dogs and us were there. As soon as we get back to lay down after finding out no one was there, whatever had walked through the house before runs out. One day, I was staying at my boyfriend's sister house for the night. This home she owns and is very haunted. Her daughters talk to a person named Oji, scream and yell that this thing is scaring them. The motion sensor toys go off all the time, so on. Anyway, this night, I was just falling asleep on the couch and out of the corner of my eye, something keeps moving in the kitchen, next to the living room. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I wake up to a chill running down my spine. I go to the kitchen to grab a glass of water. As I walk into the kitchen, the overhead light flicks on, and I turn to tell the kids it's late and time for bed. But instead, I see a woman in a white dress. 
Her body was deformed. Her long, dark hair was covering her face. Thank the girl from the grudge hair. Then as soon as the light flicked on, it goes off, and she's gone. This house is built next to an old, unmarked graveyard. All of the family has seen this woman walking through the house and the yard. I think it's evil, as the kids are so scared of it, and say she does mean things to them, and lives on the ceiling. Needless to say, those homes scare me, and everybody who lives in them. Are ghosts real? Well, now I know they are. It was Friday night, and had just gotten home from spending the whole day with Jay, who was my boyfriend at the time, and now is my husband. At the time, I lived with my mom, stepdad, triplet brothers, in a two-bedroom, two-bath condo. My family was going through some hard times, and that was all we could afford at the time. I shared the master room with the triplets, so each of us had a twin bed. Two of the beds were on each side of the room, the third one under one bed that could be pulled out when needed, and the fourth, my bed, was at the foot of the second bed, making a backwards L shape. That faced the bedroom door. Fast forward to about 11.30 p.m. We say our goodnights and go to bed. Exhausted from my long day, I fell asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. Now this is where things get scary. I can't exactly remember if I was dreaming or not, but I do remember clear as day waking up to find what felt like someone pinning me down with their hands, one on each shoulder and their knee in the middle of my back. I could feel my blood running with fear. As I lay there frozen, it leaned over and whispered, Are you awake? I felt paralyzed, couldn't seem to move or open my eyes. I tried to scream, but all my efforts were useless. Even though I couldn't move, I did feel like I was going to shit myself. That's how scared I was. I again heard the same creepy sinister voice say, this time in a loud whisper, I know you're awake. Again, I try to move, but all I can do is pray. As I'm praying for this to stop, I hear the most evil, malicious, vile laugh I have ever heard in my life. I could hear my heart and blood racing. I slowly start gaining control of myself. I manage to sit up. It's dark, but the outside light is bright enough to where you can see where everything is. And that's when I see him, or it. The shadow of a man in what looks to be a trench coat. Now I can't really say in detail what it or he looked like, because it looked like a shadow walking by, and just like that it disappeared. About five minutes go by, and I'm now sitting up. I look over at the triplets, and they're all sound asleep. Now I know you guys may think I had some type of sleep paralysis, but I know for sure that was not the case. The next morning, I join my parents for breakfast when I start telling them about my terrifying experience. The story grabs one of my brothers, we'll call him Chris, attention. As I continue with my story, Chris starts walking towards us, and before I could tell them about the evil laugh, he blurts out, The laugh! You heard the laugh! It was an evil manly laugh. It made me jump out of my sleep. But when I looked over there, there was nobody. I closed my eyes again and heard movement on your side of the room, so I peeked and I just saw you sitting up. I wanted to say something, but I wasn't even sure myself what that was. Shivers went down my spine. Everyone was freaking out, thinking someone might have broke in. We double checked everywhere for signs of a break in and found nothing. We have since moved and are living better lives. But if anyone has ever had an experience similar to mine, I would love to hear it. Or if you have an idea on what it could have been, please, I'd like to know. I also forgot to mention that prior to this happening, my upstairs neighbor committed suicide, and he wasn't found till about a week later. This all started at least a week ago. I felt so horribly sick. I couldn't keep down anything without extreme nausea, let alone food. I've lost quite a bit of weight. My head had migraine level headaches. I felt so miserable, depressed, every waking moment of that week. I grew up in with a whole family who works in the medical field, so 
I knew she'd only worry about a migraine after 15 days. On the last day, I felt my worst. Like running to the bathroom, feeling seconds from throwing up kind of bad. My head hurt so much, I couldn't function. I kept seeing flashes and things darting from the corner of my vision. I would go into these trances where all I could do was stare. I felt so confused and dizzy all week. Emotionally, I was distraught. It got to the point to where I was lying down in the fetal position, crying uncontrollably and praying for the pain to go away. I had put toothpaste all over my nose and upper lip to ease the nausea and I eventually fell asleep. I kept shivering and twitching uncontrollably, but not quite like a seizure until I fell asleep. I had a very vivid dream. All I saw was blackness, but I heard so much more. I heard a strong voice say, I call upon the archangels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and I might have heard something like ethereal as well, but it all happened so fast I couldn't mentally jot them all down. Then I heard several voices all around me, saying things like, you're going to be okay, it's all over, the suffering is over. Then I woke up, sitting up and alert, absolutely no pain or agony. I felt safe and went back to sleep immediately. I woke up later the same morning and I felt refreshed. Just in case, I went all day without eating until I had one slice of bread about an hour ago. I feel a little tired, but much better than yesterday. My stomach hurts a little and feel like shivering as I type this, but every time I stopped to take care of some other responsibility, I felt fine. I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm just glad that it's over. I should start off by saying, I am 18, and I live with my parents and my dog. I have never really experienced paranormal things before, until this year. As if this year, 2020, couldn't get any weirder. It did over the summer. To give you some context, when you enter my room, straight ahead is my desk. When I'm at my desk, I'm facing the wall, so my door is behind me. One night, around two in the morning, I was at my desk on FaceTime with my best friend. She was on my iPad, propped up against the wall, so she could see me and everything behind me. We were talking, and I was looking at myself through the little preview of yourself on FaceTime, when I saw a black figure appear at my door, linger for a few seconds, and then shift to the right towards my bed and closet. I turned around, thinking I was bugging out, because it was late and I had not been sleeping. I turn around, about to tell her what I saw, when she goes, what was that? I asked what she saw before I told her what I saw and she described the exact same thing. She saw the same black spirit figure in almost a shape of a person, but not really, and then saw it shift to the right. At this point, I knew I wasn't bugging and started to freak out. This was the first time, the second time I didn't see it, but I felt it and heard it. I was once again at my desk playing among us with my friends. I was on Discord, so I had my headphones on. It was around midnight, and my parents had already gone to bed, along with my dog who sleeps in their room. I was hearing footsteps, sort of like nails, scratching at my doors and walls. I didn't think too much of it, because I thought maybe my dog had gotten out of my parents' room, and figured my mom would come to get him. It stopped for a while, then it resumed, about 45 minutes after. It was getting louder, and the scratching was more persistent. I took off my headphones, listened carefully to the footsteps, clearly in my hallway, and opened my door. 
nothing was there. I heard the scratching in the dining room now, and went and nothing. I checked my parents' room. Their door was closed completely, and everybody, including my dog, was knocked out. I asked in the morning if any of them had gotten up around that time, or if my dog had woken up, and they told me no. After that, I saw the figure, or spirit, I don't know what to call it, lingering in my room a few more times, usually fast and from the corner of my room. One time, I saw it in the living room, shifting to the side and then disappeared, but usually it is at the end of my bed or next to my bed. But one day, it got really close. I was lying down on my side on my phone, facing the slam closet, and it initially shifted when I first saw it. As I was scrolling through Instagram, I saw three fingers slowly grab at my phone from the top of where the camera is. Like one finger closed down, and then the next, and the next. And the weird thing is, I wasn't scared. Like, each time I had the experience with this spirit, I don't feel frightened. I moved and it dashed away. That was about three weeks ago now, and I haven't seen it since. This is all spanned from July of 2020 to right now, December of 2020. I hope I explain this well enough for you guys to get the idea of what I've been experiencing. If anyone has any advice or has experienced something similar, let me know. I have lived here my whole life. No one has died here before, as we are one of the first people to live here. I live in an apartment in New York City. I've asked my mother about cleansing and saging my room, and she said no over and over again. I am the only one that has experienced this in my house. My husband and I started dating back in 2011 when I was in college and still living with my mother. We would stay up really late and talk on the phone almost nightly as it was really the only thing that made our long distance relationship tolerable. This particular night, we stayed up until about three in the morning before finally saying our good nights. After hanging up, I changed into my PJs, opened my bedroom door to go down the hall and brush my teeth. Now, the way the house is set up was like a giant H. The first vertical line was the front door, living room, dining room, and kitchen. The second vertical line were the bedrooms and bathrooms with my mom's room at the top, my room, and bathroom in the middle, and the two spare rooms at the end. The short space in between was a hallway. So, to get to my bathroom, I had to hang a left from my door, pass the hallway, and make another left into the bathroom. No big deal, right? As I exited my room, I took note that my mom had her door closed. But otherwise, the house was quiet, and nothing seemed amiss. Brushed my teeth and all that jazz without incident, and headed right back to my room. Only this time, I wasn't alone. As I passed the hallway a second time, movement caught my eye, and I turned to see what it was. Honestly, if I could go back in time, I would have never looked. Standing there was a shadow figure, darker than the darkness around, so I could clearly see its outline. It was incredibly tall, so much so that its hair nearly brushed the ceiling, and incredibly lanky. I couldn't see any distinct features on its face, except for the two glowing red eyes. To say I was terrified is an understatement. I felt frozen, trapped by its demonic gaze. I never really understood the concept of being frozen by fear until that night. I always thought it was just a saying. Boy, was I wrong. 
in total. It must have been just a few seconds that we stood there, staring at each other. But it felt like several agonizing minutes. My heart racing in terror. But I couldn't do anything. And that only made the feeling that much worse. Finally, it raised a hand as if to reach out to me that snapped me out of my paralysis. Fight or flight kicked in hard and I managed to back up and race to my bedroom while my mind was screaming that it wanted to hurt me. I shut my door, miraculously without slamming it somehow, and immediately began to pray and demand that it leave my house without harming anybody or anything. I don't think I actually managed to sleep until I saw the sun rising. I'm a skeptical believer in the paranormal. I believe that there are things outside of our understanding, but I also realize the human imagination is very powerful. So the next several days and nights, I tried everything I could to, to debunk what I saw, but only came up empty handed. What made things worse was when I told my family what happened. I became the butt end of jokes, since none of them really believe. I have had several experiences with the paranormal before, and many more after this instance, but this one still shakes me to the core. When I was a teenager, I was kicked out of my parents' house and never really lived there past 14. I did stay there periodically though. The first night I ever remember sleeping in my parents' new house, I slept on a pull-out bed in their living room. As I lay there attempting to sleep, I began hearing footsteps. Everyone else in the house was sleeping soundly. The odd thing about hearing these footsteps was the fact they sounded like men's dress shoes walking on a hardwood floor and there were no hardwood floors in the entire house. And of course, the obvious fact that they sounded like they were circling me. There was nobody there. I didn't know what to do. I put my head under my covers and tried to ignore them. Even though I was seriously freaking out, this was my very first paranormal experience ever. After that, my sister and I would constantly notice the lights or the radio going on and off by themselves. So we jokingly nicknamed the ghost Uncle Bob. My sister and some of her little friends went through a witchy phase and ended up having a seance in her room. After this happened, whatever presence was in that house turned from being annoying and mischievous to being overwhelmingly ominous. Anyway, during this seance, they took a bunch of photos that was back before digital photos were a thing. And when she got the photos developed, all the light from the candles they had lit in the room looked like it was just smeared across all the photos in a dark room. So much so, in fact, that's all you could even see in the photos at all. Smeared light in an otherwise dark room. But the creepy part was that she told me the lights were on in that room the whole time. But as I said, after she did that, I think she may have invited something less friendly there because I distinctly remember sometimes getting so creeped out in the living room at night, I'd literally run through the room to get out of it as quickly as possible. Now, I've lived in a few haunted houses the second of which was mine and my husband's when I was barely 18. It was a trailer in a really nice trailer park. Anyway, when my friend and I were in my bedroom, waiting for our guys to get back from somewhere one night, we suddenly heard them walk in the front door. Finally. So, we both got up to go see what took them so long. When we got to the front door, nobody was there. We were both baffled and freaked out. 
we had both distinctly and clearly heard them open the door and walk in the house, mid-conversation. There was no doubt in either of our minds that they had returned, until we saw they had not. Another time, I had woken up before anybody else in the house, and I had heard my stepson get up and turn the TV on in the living room. So I went to greet him, since our rooms were on the opposite ends of the living room. When I got there, though, nobody was up, and the TV was still off. The room empty and silent. About ten seconds later, I then saw my stepson come out, all sleepy-eyed from his room, having just that second woken up. And I swear, I heard the TV on already. I even asked him if he'd been up watching TV just a second ago, and he said no. Other times, and quite often especially when I was alone, I'd hear knocking all over the living room walls. Like somebody was knocking from the inside of the walls or something. And it wasn't the pipes, or the house settling, or something explainable like that. It was clear, distinct knocking. It was really creepy, but not nearly as creepy as whatever was in my parents' house. Whatever that was terrified me.